This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 567 for September 3rd, 2018, made out of marshmallow. Wibbly wobbly. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston, and joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello, governor. Uh, a couple of pieces of news here at the beginning. Number one, it's episode 567, which just tickles me for no real reason. Because um, it's in order. Yeah. Uh, game Club voting for the next game is live right now for patrons at any level. You can choose mm-hmm. between three uh, titles, as is uh, customary. Um... Uh, it's a surprisingly tight race between it, all three, all three of these. So I'm curious if it's still the same it was when I voted. It's uh, it's been going back and forth uh, over the last couple of days. So there's a little bit over a week to to vote. I I usually I, I'll usually close the the poll if one game pulls out ahead pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one will this one will be open for for a little bit here. Okay, I'm. I'm not saying anything. I can very. I very much would like to move the vote in a certain direction because mm. I believe we've had an ongoing conversation about my, how my wife constantly says that Game Club is rigged because it's never a game she's interested in. <laughs> right, she has lost a couple months in a row. Yeah, and there is a game on this list that she really wants it to be. Mm. So it should be fun to find out if it wins. Yeah, go vote, and we'll find out in a uh, little over two, little under two weeks. Oh wow, it's that close already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're currently playing Ori in the Blind Forest on yep. Xbox One and PC. If you want to join in, it's not super long, um, so you still no. have some some time to hop in. Well, but with all that news out of the way, let's get down to what you've been playing this past week, Moonpeer. Okay, let's talk about Vampire. Hashtag Mm. 2018's Alpha Protocol. Yeah. So, Vampire is... I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this without swearing. Okay. It's very much one of those games. It's a bit like the Telltale Game of Thrones series, or probably any of the Telltale games. There is no positive direction. Things can go bad no matter Uh, what way you go. Right. So far, I have, like, essentially what happens, the, 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 the progress through the game is you go to an area, you learn of the pillar of the community, and their effects. So that the pillar is, is the person who's kind of holding that community together. You learn of all the people, you learn of all the social interactions between them, everyone's got a backstory. This game is incredible if you love story. <laughs> right. And then usually the end of that particular era, area, is you have to make a decision that affects the pillar of the community in such a way that things will change. Uh, so it's almost like the end of a Witcher quest where it's like they give you three options and none of them are good. Yes, that's yeah. pretty much exactly what they do because you literally get three options. <laughs> so... I made the wrong decision twice so far. Uh oh. Mm hmm. And things are bad. Like, <laughs> like real bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I not not unrecoverable, just questionable. There's been some deaths that we won't talk about. We're sort of full in on spoiler territory at this point, right? Yes, we. that's 100% why I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Yeah. Is because there are there are decisions that you can make that will very, very heavily affect the areas in question. Oh, man. Let's say I made a bad one. Okay. And we'll see how things go from there. <sighs> that's kind of exciting, though. Yes, and I'll be honest, I really kind of want to do another playthrough and make different decisions at a lot of these points. Yeah. Because I'm learning more and more about... The individual characters, their effects, their interlinks between... Really? I still didn't switch my D&D on? Okay. 
<laughs> I'm such an idiot sometimes. At least you don't have that crazy frog ringtone anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, instead I just go with the default Android one. Oh, no, the default Motorola one, I should say. Mm. Well, yeah, so... Boston, please play Vampire before the end I, of the year. Please. I really want to. Like, please. <laughs> because... I need somebody to talk about this game with. Yeah. My, like, my wife bounced off it pretty hard due to the the very high difficulty spike before all of the patches have come in. And the, the general brokenness of it. Yeah. They've done a lot of good work with the patches. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet, the story just keeps getting more and more interesting. They... What I thought was going to be a relatively simple vampire in Victorian England kind of story has turned into a multi-layer, multi-faceted organizational class structure argument between both regular people and the vampires. Hmm. There is a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background. And I really just want to learn more and play more and talk about it with somebody, but I can't because it seems like nobody I know is playing this thing except for me. <laughs> well, so, yeah. I recently got um, a Amazon gift card. So uh, I am looking to see if uh, Amazon Warehouse Deals has a sale on it. It's really, really, really good. Yeah. Like, super good. Uh, other than vampire, so moving on. Trying to keep this as brief as I can. Right, I'm just buying vampire right now. Sorry. Yes. I, I'll do it. I'll pull the trigger. Yes. So I played some Sea of Thieves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the big patches coming out. Yep, and it, I believe it was the end of the Skellington invasion or the the Skeleton Cruise event, mm -hmm. and. My wife happened to be playing it with one of our other friends, so she was like, do you want to jump in? I was like, yeah, sure. Let's go hunt down some skeletons. Yeah. So you end up, basically, you can form alliances now, so you can all work together, like, as... Like, you can form an alliance, put an alliance flag up, and then you become allied with all these other ships on your server, so you can actually go and fight this skeleton army. And it's oh, okay. really interesting, like, a bunch of the mechanics they've done. Someone also released a song that they recorded using the megaphone in Pirate Sea of Thieves. So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> Great. And it's this, the pirate event was really cool. Like, you have to fight waves of skeleton ships until the captain's ship appears, and they all look different. Uh, my personal favorite thing is when they spawn, they just come straight up out of the water and then land, and they're firing cannons at you. Oh, like their ship just comes straight out of the water? Mm -hmm. oh, that's pretty cool. It's really cool. It looks incredible. I've seen some amazing like um, footage of like the Meg having been there at the same time as the pirate ships. Oh wow! Like it's ridiculous. But so like they keep adding more to that game, and you know what? Good on them. They could have just like flopped it out the door and said, "There you go. Do what you want." <laughs> it's on Game Pass, so what do we need yeah. to do? But they seem to be doing a pretty good job of consistently adding more. Like, I I see so many tweets from them in regards to updates and patches and information and stuff like that. So it seems like they're in this for the long haul. And good for them if they are, especially considering it's essentially now free to play with it being on Game Pass. Yeah. So, Sea of Thieves, if you're interested, I'm sure you can find people to play with. If not, use the um, use the one night stand function on Xbox because it's really <laughs> useful. Right. <sighs> I played a couple of rounds of PUBG. Hmm. Because the game is coming out of early access. I believe it's next week. Is a, it's a, is its like official start day. Oh, okay. So it comes out of early access, which means that I played a couple of rounds, had a bit of fun died like a complete and utter idiot by driving a car therefore killing myself my wife and cat our friend <laughs> because why not yeah. you know and now I'm not going to play that again until until it comes out because early access games don't have them sweet chivos I don't play <sighs> Aston I right. don't play PUBG I, I don't play most of these games because as much as I'm interested in them, I will wait for the fair, for the full game to come out so I can actually make progress towards stuff at the same right. time as having fun. Because it, it happened with PUBG, like I got bent out on it, 
I was playing it every two every day every two days for like a good four or five months I was like you know I think I'm pretty much done because I just I, I'm putting so many hours into this I'm not playing anything else mm-hmm. and I'm, I just got burnt out on it so I took a nice big long healthy break I popped back in yesterday saw how things were going they seem to be going great updates are good for the record everyone that I'm playing on the Xbox version as well if that wasn't clear uh, they seem to be going well. They've got the new maps in. They've got a whole bunch of patches and bug fixes. The game runs a lot smoother. It runs a lot cleaner, a lot crisper. Good. So they are making good big steps towards that. But now I'll wait. Now I'll wait until the full game comes out and then I can play it at the same time as in them sweet, sweet Chivos because I love my Chivos. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of achievements, so do you remember how when they first started talking about like 4K and digital stuff and bandwidth caps and what basically what's the size implications going to be like for downloading games mm, right. and then how you know is what is 500 gig is one terabyte enough space on a console right for games right like how much bigger are 4k assets yes the answer is no one terabyte is not enough space <laughs> the answer is no Five terabytes is not enough space. I wonder what game you're talking about from this week that got a patch. Destiny 2 has a 68 gig patch. Yeah, yes. If if you were a little bit behind, yeah, Destiny has a, a very large patch. Mm-hmm. Minecraft has... Not Minecraft. Master Chief Collection has a 76 gig patch. Yep. Would you like to know how much how many gigs of space I have on my <laughs> Xbox with my four terabyte hard drive plugged in? Uh, I'm gonna say probably less than 250 gigs left. 53 gigs <laughs> left. <sighs> so I need to get some of these games off my console as yeah. soon as humanly possible. Get some spring cleaning. So I played a little FIFA 15. I have okay. two achievements left in this game because I want to uninstall it. And uh, to be honest, I'm getting fed up with it, and I'm not gonna go back too much. I don't. I don't have the time I used to. I work more hours now than I have in a long time. Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a case of like where I used to work long hours. I was living at home by myself. So right. that's all I did. Now it's different. So I'm probably just going to end up saying, okay, here's my cutoff point. If I haven't got all the achievements by this point, I'm just going to uninstall it. I'm never going to get the multiplayer achievements in Far Cry 3. I know <laughs> I'm not. No. I... I could very easily probably put up a post on True Achievements and ask, you know, basically ask for help for getting these things done. I did it for Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous has multiplayer achievements. Mm -hmm. I I got a whole bunch of them. Not all of them, but a whole bunch of them just by putting together basically a boosting group on True Achievements. So I could mess around with the mode and also get those sweet Chivos. I might be done with FIFA 15 because when you start, when you've played, your most recent FIFA is FIFA 17. Which is two years after that. Right. It's very difficult to go back to those games, so I'm probably gonna start uninstalling a whole bunch of games from my console. FIFA 15, <laughs> Far Cry 3. I'm pretty much done at this point. Right. So, you only want to keep like the current model year. Yeah, and <laughs> to be honest, I just don't have the time anymore. Like, yeah. I don't have the time to play what I want to play, let alone to be the the achievement hunter I'd like to be. Like it's, right. It, mentally bothers me the fact that I have two achievements left in this game there are single player achievements that I can get but it bothers me the fact that I don't have them Far Cry 3 doesn't bother me so much because it's multiplayer and it's very hard for me to get a schedule down for when I can actually play multiplayer games with people right. so that I can view as a wash it's the single player stuff that bothers me in in a weird in a weird because you just need to go do it like there's nothing there's yeah. nothing preventing you like multiplayer where it's like no one's playing Far Cry 3 multiplayer anymore sorry mhm downside with FIFA 15 the two I have left is odd. they are very 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 luck based so oh, yay exactly so I don't know I'm rethinking my whole life at this moment in time <laughs> you're, you're, I like we're, we're, we're boiling down to an existential crisis <laughs> basically that's exactly what it is because right. like like I said Far Cry doesn't bother me I, I ain't never touching I'm never getting those multiple achievements and that is fine 
Yeah. This is a case of how many hours do I spend trying to get these two achievements <laughs> just for the satisfaction in my brain of having those bars completed. I feel like this is like you're a character in Monster Hunter where it's like, am I an S rank hunter or am I happy being an A rank hunter? Is that good mm-hmm. enough? <laughs> yeah. That, that's the problem is it's not good enough because right. I can't help it. I need that bar full. Yep. If the, especially if literally the only obstacle between me and that bar being full is me. That's, right. the, that's right. the part that bothers me. <laughs> It's like a Nike ad. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. I'm trying. Yeah. It's very difficult. Right. So, oh, yeah. Man. We will see if FIFA 15 gets that old tweet of Moonpeer has completed this game kind of thing. Or if it just gets deleted from my hard drive. Ugh. So, my last game this week. And my new game this week. Uh, fresh onto Xbox Game Pass with its multiplayer update is Humans Fall Flat. Ah, uh, yes, this... The internet's darling recently, I believe, it can be referred to as. I remember watching... I remember watching Human Fall Flat when... Vinny was playing it on Giant Bomb like a year ago or so, and I think it was Early Access on Steam. And mm-hmm. um, even that, at that point, I was like, ah, right, this is... If, if enough people can play this, this could be something special. Yeah, so I remember seeing it about a year ago again, too, with the Rooster Teeth crew all playing around with it. Mm, yeah. I didn't watch the video fully because at the time I was doing something else, but I remember seeing it that long ago. For those who don't know what this is, this is essentially a physics-based platformer, similar to the way Gang Beast is a, phys- is a physics-based Yeah, it's brawler. like that ragdoll physics thing. Yeah, it's basically the invert opposite of Portal, where Portal is a physics-based platformer that's very, very precise, yeah. very direct. You know exactly <laughs> what you need to do and how to execute it. This is more a case of swing the thing around until it does what it's meant to do, and then you're good. And you're basically controlling somebody who's made out of marshmallow. Yes. And it's really fun because the update got hit, like the update dropped with the multiplayer on it. And promptly, myself, my wife, uh, Brain Eater, and T-Bomb Rocks from the community all jumped into a game together and promptly messed each other's stuff up. (laughs) Working as intended. Yes. It's hilarious because when it starts you, it kind of starts you in a line. Mm -hmm. But because the levels are really compact, usually in the spawn zones, my wife was always dropped off in, like, the next room that we were supposed to get to. (laughs) Like, quarantined. (laughs) Like, it was really weird. Like, we were all in prison, and she was free to run around. It was kind Hmm. of weird. So, basically, it becomes an anarchy game where you have to get to the exit of the level, but let's see how we get there. And... And how many times we mess things up or mess each other up doing so. Right. Like, there's something kind of ironic about smashing a bulldozer, not a bulldozer, but like a big builder's bucket or like on a crane. Mm -hmm. Smashing that into people while you're trying to figure (laughs) out what's going on. Right. And it's all physics based, so you end up with stuff. (laughs) It's... It's so stupid because you can accidentally get yourself into bad situations. There is a level where at the end of the level, you basically have to pull this plank out and it drops this essentially like a a trapeze swing. Mm -hmm. You can then jump on the trapeze swing and swing your way through to the exit of the level. I didn't realize you should pull the plank out, so I pushed the plank in. Okay. <laughs> and then it ended up with this situation where the plank was like jammed, basically facing straight vertically down between this bar of the trapeze and the platform that I was stood on. <laughs> it took me a good 10 minutes while people were playing with boxes to get this thing to come out of, of the hole. But then I very promptly replaced the plank with myself. <laughs> so then I was stuck in this gap and the trapeze wouldn't come down so nobody could exit the level because I was jammed where the plank used to be jammed (laughs) and then it just become this 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 minute like think of how do we free moon right, right like how do we get him out of this pickle he's in so that we can actually exit the level 
We now have another goal. Yes. It's really, really stupidly fun, and it's very much a case of there's usually multiple ways. Like, the, the starting levels seem to be very simple of do it, do an A, get to B, find the exit, and leave. Right. Really, really simple. The later levels, like the level we ended on, is a castle level where you could, you've basically got to storm a castle and you can get in via a number of means. My wife and I took a diverted route. One of the, I think it was Rob, shot himself further into the level using a catapult. And Justin was busy trying to break down like a lock. And then it just become this whole cluster thing. <laughs> and I, I then promptly turned the catapult around and I went backwards in the level to try and basically use a zip line to jump all the way down to basically skip a whole sections of the level. And whoever finds the exit first just exits the level for everybody. So it's kind of handy to have multiple people going different ways. Yeah. But it just becomes... It's just one of those things where it's the couch co-op thing, or except it's online, where you're mm-hmm. just having fun, having, like, the physics-based nightmares that can happen. Like, <laughs> you've seen it in games before when physics goes slightly wrong and it yeah. produces hilarious results. It's like that, except the physics are working as intended. <laughs> right. It's all supposed to be a little chaotic. Yes. When you jump on a wrecking ball and start singing Miley Cyrus' rec- uh, wrecking ball. Right. As Working one as intended. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Humans fall, fall flat is really fun. Like, really fun. And it's yeah. up to eight people co-op. Eight. Oh, my God. That's so many. Yeah. That so might be too many. <laughs> we need four more people yeah. to play Humans Fall Flat with us so we can get real weird. Yeah. But yeah, Humans Fall Flat is fun. And that's pretty much all I've been playing. Busy, busy weeks. Uh, boy, I played a lot of stuff this week. So Donut County just came out. Is um, that download only? Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like um, Limited, Limited Run. Run Games would come out with a physical. But yeah, it's on um, PS4... PC and iOS? I believe um, so, yes. Uh, so Donut County is really crazy in a way that I really love. Um, you play as a raccoon uh, whose name is BK, and he works at a donut shop. And when people use their app to ask for a donut to be delivered to them, he uses a raccoon-specific app to open up a hole near where they are and just swallow everything up. Uh, and it's surprising because it is the game that most feels like the first two Katamari games oh, more than that. anything else I I have played, I think, since those two games. Um, it, it has that same feeling of, you know, you start the level and you... You're controlling just a really tiny hole, and you're, you know, you're you're stuffing rocks and little blades of grass in there, um, yeah. and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as you play the level, and um, you're swallowing up, you know, bushes and houses and mountain sides and and all that stuff. I think my I I really 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 like Donut County. I think. The music is fantastic. I think the writing is really great. Um, there's a bunch of stuff where you're texting with other people. Um, and there's only two buttons. One is reply and then just a duck emoji. And when you push that, it just goes quack. And you you just quack back at each other for really no reason. That's um, kind of cool. Yeah. And it you play like a level or two and then it the story skips ahead and basically you and the entire everybody that lives in the town is trapped 999 feet under Donut County and you're recounting how BK screwed up and swallowed up the entire town Um, and there's there's a lot more story in there than I would have thought and it's all really fun I think my only criticism of the game is it's going to sound bad, but I, I think long-term it isn't. It's pretty short. Um, uh, you can easily beat it in under two hours. 
Um, oh wow! How much does it run? Uh, iOS is five dollars, which is a, a pretty good price. Um, I think I spent ten dollars on PS4. I, I want it. I I I don't think it's fifteen dollars. Um, I I'll, would use my phone, but I don't have the PS4 store app installed. I only have the account manager app installed. Ah, uh, right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, on Steam, they have it for, like, $13. Um, I, it's tough because I feel like um, that's not a terrible price because no. I'm going to keep Donut County installed, and it's a really great game where it's like, all right, I just want to play something kind of dumb and fun and as soon as you beat it you get a level select yeah. so y- you can just play whichever levels you want at that point i did also notice on twitter a lot that this thing has the say a similar approach to the item descriptions that far cry 5 does <laughs> yeah it's the trashopedia yes yeah uh it's really great because it took me a little bit to realize that BK is writing it, so it's all of these items from, from the raccoons. perspective of a raccoon. It's, yeah, it's really good. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I think, I I think, the thing that bums me out a little bit about Donut County is, um, it's a it, again, it's a positive and a negative. It doesn't do much else beyond. You're controlling a hole, and you need to swallow everything up in a level. There is, like, a boss battle at the end that's a little bit different, but it it, it doesn't really do stuff much different, which is a negative, but I kind of like that it's just that. You know, like, just how Katamari was the ball, and you're just getting bigger over these levels. It wasn't anything... You know, Katamari started to lose its focus when it's like, all right, only roll up, you know, cold stuff in this level. If you, ro- you know... Uh, roll up a fire. Oh, it's gonna pull back some of your progress. Like I don't, I just want to roll up everything. Yeah, that's um, kind of the whole point of Katamari is to literally get everything you can get. Yeah, and I think Donut County uh, understands that instinctively, and you know, it's a shorter experience, and there there isn't a lot more to it other than just you know dropping stuff into this hole. But that's okay. You know, it's yeah. not it's not a uh, a hyper uh, insane roguelike whole swallowing game. It's not, it's not this thing. It's just like yeah, man, you you control the hole, and it's a lot of fun to swallow stuff up. Like that's all it is, and that's it's exci- it's it's refreshing that that's all it needs to be. Yeah, it's like we still need those kinds of games, despite how many how much. We get the AAA and the super serious and even indie games seem to have taken like the we're going to have a story and we're going to have 100% of seriousness in everything these days. Right. It's good to get these games where it's just dumb fun. Yeah. Uh, Joe J in YouTube chat says, looks like an easy platinum. Yes, it's a very easy platinum. Um, if you're if you're so inclined to uh, get platinum, I'll probably do it later. Um, but I there's, there's a lot on my plate right now. But Donut County is is I really like it. I have heard it controls pretty well on iOS, um, and five bucks is kind of the right price for an an iOS game. Um, so that's probably where I would recommend it. Yeah. I'm really hoping it comes to Switch and Xbox One at some point because I, the more people that that get to play this, the better. Uh, Destiny Two, a uh, couple of new things this week. Um, Forsaken comes out on Tuesday, so I'm 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 really not playing it that much because Solstice of Heroes was a real grind. Oh, I gotta time somebody out here and uh, spend like two minutes here, and then uh, just gonna act a fool. Uh, got 45 minutes because that sounds about good. Good. Um, uh, Solstice of Heroes was a grind, so I, I'm sort of taking a breather before I get into the seemingly incredible stuff, uh, amount of stuff that's in Forsaken. Uh, but the big, uh, as Moonpeer said, the big uh, version 2.0 patch landed. Uh, yep. It was only 35 gigs for me because I'm I'm uh, a up little more, more caught up on uh, patch-wise. Um, but, boy, they weren't kidding. Every Literally everything in this game changed. 
Uh, oh, the, wow. The only thing that hasn't changed is the same enemies you fight and nothing on the planet to change. <laughs> but every single other thing did. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is probably the new weapon system. Um, for anybody that hasn't played Destiny, it was basically you had three slots for weapons, primary, secondary, and heavy. Um, in this one, it's kinetic, energy, and heavy, but it's the same thing. It's basically white, green, and then purple. What they did is they, they've uncoupled weapons from their slot. So, so hold on, I'm going to guess, and I, just based on that description, so if I've got an assault rifle that I really, really like... Yep. I can put that in the secondary sl- in the in the green slot, and it becomes an energy weapon. No, but s- no, but sort of. So there are weapons that are only going to go in the heavy slot uh, now, yeah, like rocket uh, launchers. Yeah, rocket launchers and um, linear fusion rifles are the ones that have to stay in that slot. But before, that was like shotguns and fusion rifles and snipers went in the heavy slot. But now, like for example, I picked up a sniper uh, the other day when I was just screwing out on Mars. It goes in my primary slot. Okay, that's weird. (laughs) Yeah, so like at this point, you know, the big joke is if you want to run three shotguns at this point, you can. Because you have a shotgun in every slot that's available to go in there. Good Um, luck balancing multiplayer. (laughs) It's so far... PvP hasn't been that bad because you have so many more options in each slot now. Um, they did a great job. A bunch of weapons got moved around in slots um, to sort of accommodate for that. Um, but man, does it feel way, way, way different. Because you can run again like you did in Destiny 1. You can run you know, whatever you want in the primary slot, a sniper rifle and then a rocket launcher Mm -hmm. Um, and that feels really great because before before I felt like the they had the wrong weapons in the wrong slots yes so you were always choosing between a sniper rifle or a rocket launcher a rocket launcher was gonna kind of always win because it yeah a little more versatile in both pve and pvp um but thankfully they buffed Nearly every weapon, uh, non-precision and precision damage, um, all these weapons have moved around, and you're a lot more free to use different things in different slots. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around, because they not only did that, they changed how ammo works at the same time. So you can actually have two weapons equipped, like in your primary and secondary slots, that both use white ammo bricks. Ah. So that's interesting, because when you pick up one of those, it splits ammo between the two. Or you can go back to the old system where it's white, green, and purple. Interesting. Um, So that's going to... That's part of the reason why I haven't been playing that much lately, is I I sort of get my head around the system, and I I cleaned up all my inventory, and I've got my character, my, my primary character set for Forsaken, but I don't really, really want to burn myself out in this. This is this sort of quagmire week where half the game is kind of broken because they're replacing a bunch of systems with new stuff on Tuesday. So um, it's not been really super worth playing a lot of it. Yeah. But they did, uh, yesterday on Saturday, they did have a 24-hour uh, trial for Gambit, the new they call it PvEVP I call it Cooperative Competitive, because um, I think that makes more sense um, and also it's easier to say um, this is really interesting because there are two teams of four, I'm, I'm just going to overview it real quick, uh, two teams of four that are have their are on their own maps and when you kill enemies they drop these motes You scoop all those up, and when you get enough, or whenever you're ready, you bank them in this thing in the middle. It it reminds me a lot of, um, that stuff reminds me a lot of Titanfall 2. It's like you scooped up all this money and you you toss it in the bank. Yeah. Um, When you get a set number of uh, moats that you bank, 5, 10, and 15 are the ones, you send blockers, so you send enemies to the other team's map, and it shuts down their bank until they kill that blocker, then the the bank comes up. Um, and then I think it's when you 
bank, as a team, when you bank 25 moats, a portal opens up and you can invade the other player's map. Um, and if you kill another player, their moats drop forever. So you you just increase the amount of work that they have to do. When you get to 75 moats, you spawn your boss, you kill it, you win. Um, it's really good. <laughs> like it's I, watching their their gameplay stuff before this trial. I was already really interested in it because I like the idea of I like I said in Discord, giving me cooperative competitive stuff is a really easy sell for me. That's the stuff yeah. I really like. Like I like working with my team to work against another team and having that little icing on the cake of doing the PvP invasion stuff is just a little bit better and like a little bit of a screw you to the other team. But I like that race against the other team to kind of and then you have that Tetris thing where you're you're doing well enough on your side so you're sending you know in Tetris it's like sending a bunch of screw you pieces to the other side yeah. um, I, I really liked it and um, there were some things that needed a little bit of work on this trial and they say it's actually going to be fixed on Tuesday with the, the day one patch um, so that's great and I they have a whole bu- a whole ranking system associated with it and a whole bunch of gear that's exclusive to it, so I'm going to be playing a whole bunch of it. <laughs> just, yeah, just Boston's going to use with his Destiny love. Yeah. Uh, and one last thing about Destiny, if you're a PlayStation Plus member, uh, Destiny 2, the base game, is free this month. Um, so you can just download it on your PS4, and as long as you're a PS Plus member, you can keep it. Uh, yep. It doesn't have any of the DLC, but uh, that stuff is on sale um, first two DLC packs are half off, uh, I think, for this week. Um, so if you wanted to try Destiny 2, whether you like Destiny or you're maybe a little bit on the fence with Destiny 2, y- you sort of can't go wrong for free and kind of yeah. spend, like, at most 10 hours, you know, blowing through that story and probably doing some strikes and stuff. You know, if you don't like it, I you not really spend any money on it. Um... And if you're a Destiny 2 player that uh, has a disc, uh, pro tip, you can also use this to uh, get a free download copy uh, so you don't have to keep your disc in the PS4. So it's a button press away. Welcome yeah. to the digital future. Yeah, it's so nice. Yes, it uh, is. Uh, Dead of. Cells. Yeah. I could not get a run together to save my life this week. I t- I'm not going to lie. I took a little break from it because I got the... I I got the frame skip straight yep. to my death. Ah, uh, so I t- I stepped back for a little bit. I'm taking a little bit of a break, mostly because I happened to be on a run where the build was perfectly suited to my playstyle, and oh, I had no. two primary golden drops and one trap golden drop. So I was way in for a really good run, and then things went wrong. So I thought, no, I think I will back away. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in uh, Motion Twin or the developers. Um, I'm a little disappointed in them that they're not. I I can't find anywhere that they're talking about the frame skip stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was finding. Someone hit me up on um, Twitter because I was complaining about the screen shake again. Because it yeah. just it makes me so dizzy when I have a run that... Um, like, there's the Hayabusa boots, which I think are, are really fun. Yep. But the third and fourth uh, kick on those shakes the, the screen. AOE. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's doing an AOE. Um, so a run with those items and kicking down doors, it just... There's something about it that, that makes me really dizzy. Um, which stops me from playing the game, which is not a thing I want to do. Same with the frame skip. Like, um, I haven't. I have the frame skip showing up pretty frequently, but I, I've been lucky that it really hasn't been showing up on anywhere where I'm in like a life or death situation. Yeah. But the developer doesn't seem to be talking about either of those things, so I don't. It's, it's I one. Don't know. Is it one guy again? No, I think it's a handful of people because oh, they had that news story a couple weeks ago where everyone in the studio gets paid the same thing, the same mm-hmm. amount of money, um, which, number one, super cool. Um, yeah. 
but I, I get the impression it's not one or two people, but I think maybe it's around ten. Yeah. Um, so and I know they're focusing on the performance, the slight performance issues that the Switch version has, um, which is fair. But it, it would be nice if someone would say like, "Hey, we're not, we we don't really, we're not going to work on the screen shake thing because that's that's what we want for the game," or you know, we're we're working on the the uh, frame skip thing or something other than crickets, basically. Yeah. Uh, it it. It's frustrating because it feels an awful lot like the Binding of Isaac stuff on consoles, where it's like, oh, Hi, we, Nicholas. we put that out on, oh, yeah, did we do that? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, come, come on. Like, I, I spent money on your game. I, I, I am also a customer. I'm not going to be a super jerk about it, but I, it would be, I, it would be greatly appreciated if there was some level of communication. Especially considering that, that a new DLC just got announced. Yeah, we have that in news stories, but mm-hmm. yeah. It, so for for both companies, it, it it would be appreciated if there was some level of even if it's just like a middle finger gif on Twitter. It'd be like, okay, well now I know where I stand. Fair enough. Yeah, you know that sort of thing. Uh, next, Hollow Knight. Okay, tell me about Hollow Knight. <sighs> have you hit the burnout phase yet, or are you still in the I love this game phase? I'm in both phases <laughs> okay so i've hit i just hit 20 hours um and i've i'm maybe 75 percent of the way through the base game um this game is enormously gigantically big and i feel like i feel the same way about this like i i've sort of had trouble with donut county Hollow Knight is really great because it's really big, and I'm also sort of a little sick of traversing the same pathways because it's really big. Yeah. I I think overall, Hollow Knight's size will be to its benefit, and I think it is, that's one of its, the feathers in its cap, but... There are some times where I just have I want to go to a vendor to go spend something because I, I I have a bunch of currency, and it's sort of like okay, well the map changed, so now I need to go to this place and then I need to go like up and around to sort of get to this person. It's like yeah, I'm kind I'm kind of a little sick of that. Um, yeah, but it's at the end of the day, it's not that big. I just don't get a ton of time at one time to play Hollow Knight. I don't get to like I need the 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 real sweet spot would be I'm going to sit down for like two or three hours at once. I'm going to get into the groove and I'm going to, you know, fill in the spots on the map that I haven't been to before and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't really, I, I'd be lucky if I get about a half an hour at <laughs> one sitting where I can, I can do something. Um, but on the other side of the coin, like I ran into, um, a new area it's called Kingdom's Edge, and there were a couple of enemies floating off on the the side of the map, or the side of the screen I was on. And one of the earliest, um, it's not a spoiler, one of the earliest um, moves you get, it's like this fireball thing you shoot out of yourself. So I thought, all right, well, I just, I'm just going to fireball these guys. This is going to be cool. And I opened up a secret passageway in the wall, and when I went in there, there was a whole giant new area... <laughs> that's sealed behind this bra- breakable wall that you may or may not have ever found before. It's like, okay, Hollow Knight. <laughs> now I have yep. a whole other place to explore. All right. Um, I I do have to say, I, I did do... I sort of overcame two milestones um, on the way to... I, I think I'm approaching the end of the base game... Um, at some point, you find it's like this monument. It, the storytelling in Hollow Knight reminds me of some of the stuff they do in Dead Cells, where you're sort of getting bits and pieces of lore and like, obviously yeah. things went really poorly, but you don't know who you are and you don't know how everything else went. Um, and I, I kind of dig that. Um, and you stumble upon this monument. 
and when you read the plaque on it, three things sort of scatter across the map. Um, I've broken two of the things out of the three, um, and I <laughs> I did two infamous things. One is there was that boss fight that I was talking about last week where you fight six bosses in a row. Yep. Finally took care of that. Um, that was really me getting some health upgrades and some uh, skill improvements and then just sort of having a really good day where I was just I was playing pretty well. Um, and then I completed Deep Nest, which... Okay. Is a nightmare zone. <laughs> like, okay. It, it's one of these things that you're supposed to stumble on it, and then you kind of get trapped there for a while. Oh, and, great! So and it's, it's it's really rough. Like it, it's it's Blight Town, Hollow Knight's Blight Town. Yes, it's very much Hollow Knight's Blight Town, and it's creepy. There's no music. Um, you hear like insects skittering all over the place. One That's of my, my favorite sound in video games ever. Yeah, it's 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 not good. One of my biggest uh, suggestions for Hollow Knight for anybody that's thinking about playing it is if at all possible play it with headphones um, because there's so much stuff in the environment that you know you might hear there are these little grubs you can rescue um, and they might be behind breakable walls and they may be like way up above where you are but you, you may not think of looking for a pathway up there but you're always sort of hearing this me 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 you know, off in the background you're like ooh one of there's one here oh, I gotta get that guy yeah, um, I can't remember what game I played recently but there was something I played within the past year that did that extremely well where there'd be secrets off up through a hidden ceiling or something but mm. you could hear like the thing behind the walls yeah and they do that with enemies sometimes too where it's like sometimes you can just it'll look like there's some like rock formation at the edge of the screen mm -hmm. but you can hear an enemy and you're like well I cleared them all out and you can actually walk through because that's just in the foreground you can actually walk through that and off to a secret uh, area off on the side um, I, I feel like I feel like I have finally come to terms with why people call this sort of a Dead Souls Metroidvania game and it's Dark Souls, sorry. Um, and it's not so much the mechanics, because it, it plays so much differently from uh, one of the Souls games. Yeah. But it's that it's that slowly climbing up the mountain thing, where you're fighting... And your progress is great. Yeah, and like you're fighting a boss, and you're going to lose to it maybe t five, ten times, or in the case of that, that one boss fight, 15 or 20 times. But you're learning a little bit more each and every time you're fighting it, and you're making it a little bit further, like, all right, I beat two of those six bosses this time. All right, all right, I'm going to try again. Okay, I bought, beat three of them this time, and next time is five, and then you finally beat it, and it just it feels so good until you go to the next area, and then there's another nightmare of a boss <laughs> yep, down that's, that way. That's very much the Dark Souls, Demon Souls approach. Yep. And I... I can, I, I, I think Hollow Knight to me, even without finishing it, and, and as far as I know, I'm not really touching any of the DLC stuff yet. Mm -hmm. So far, Hollow Knight, from me, gets uh, an absolute recommendation. Um, I think for $15, it's an incredibly huge game. It plays perfectly. Like, we've, I, I feel like we've, you and I have been playing game a bunch of games lately, sort of by accident, between Celeste and uh, uh, Dead, Dead Cells. Cells and Hollow Knight and a bunch of stuff that just they control perfectly and they feel right. And mm -hmm. Hollow Knight, it like the first time you figure out you can sort of bounce on enemies and do damage to them by doing a downward slash, you get that rhythm down, like it just. Having that revelation and then being able to do it and control it correctly just feels great. 
Yeah. My only hesitation, though, is I'm not entirely sure how deep I want to go into this. I definitely want to finish it because I want to talk about it somewhere in my top ten list this year. Yeah. But with it coming out on PS4 and Xbox One spring of next year, I feel like I want to go super deep into it there because I know um, I know a lot of the stuff I have in the end game are... I've seen a little bit of it, are either very combat heavy, where you're going to need to play really well through waves and waves of enemies and bosses. Um, yeah. And there's a uh, a whole area that is specifically a super hardcore uh, platforming area. And mm. uh, someone I saw someone talk about it this morning, they likened it to Celeste, actually. Saying, like, look, if you played Celeste and you liked that challenge go do this optional thing, it's pretty much the same. So you're um, thinking maybe do main story for this year's Game of the Year and do um, any the deep, deep, deep dive for next year's stuff? Yeah, because I, like, I feel like if I want to go through all that stuff, I feel like I want the controller that I prefer, not yeah. the Joy-Cons. Because... They've they've suited me pretty well so far, but every time I play it with my the pro controller, I'm like, oh, right, gotcha, D pad. That's yeah. why. Yeah, this is the good stuff because to me it's a 2D game, so I'm playing it with the D pad. Um, I know a lot of people will play games like this with the the stick, but for some reason I can't with like 2D platforming or Metroidvania games. It just just doesn't feel it doesn't feel precise enough, and. It, I know that that probably isn't true because it's probably yeah, the, just as precise with the stick. So, Dead Cells, are you stick or D pad? D pad, 100%. Okay. I'm stick, but yeah. again, it's the whole I play Dead Cells on the Xbox and I can't do that, otherwise, it hurts. So, I have to do that. Yeah, you do the asymmetric, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I think to me, Hollow Knight still feels like one of, one of the best. Metroidvanias, with the big asterisk of I'm not finished with it yet. Yeah. Combined with an incredible difficulty, but it's I I have never felt like it, it's insurmountable. I never feel like it's unfair, you know. And I feel like that's the best stuff that the Souls games do. I was just gonna say that's what Souls does best and better than most games is it doesn't feel like it's screw you. Yep. It's you screwed up. Yes, and and I feel like nine times out of ten, I feel like that in Hollow Knight. There are a couple times, you know, like when you're fighting a bunch of mon- like especially with that six boss battle, you're fighting two bosses in a row, and they have like only two or three moves a piece. But sometimes you sort of get pushed in from both sides, and then they kind of they're swiping at you both from both sides, and it's like, all right, I don't see how I could have performed better than that i just kind of got trapped in a corner um but nine times out of ten it's sort of like all right i was just i was being dumb i got greedy i just hung back and healed a little bit i i I can be better than that and i'm gonna do better this next time i play Um, yeah and i think for me if you love metrovenias i can recommend this but you have to know the difficulty level going in, and you have to be okay with it. Because um, I'm playing on normal. I don't remember if there's an easy, but I know there is a harder difficulty. Um, yeah. And there are a bunch of achievements, even in the Switch version, for like, finish the game in under 20 hours. Finish the game in under 5 hours. It's like, I will. I know I won't get the Platinum on the PS4 version, because I'm never... I, I, can't, I could not imagine finishing this game in less than five hours Um, yeah it's the whole um oh what was it the unreal game the unreal metroidvania uh shadow complex yeah shadow complex was like three hours i can't whoops i did it (laughs) yep yeah but i i think the thing for me is imagine shadow complex's map and then make that 10 times bigger True, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Oh, if absolutely. The speedrunners will find us a way. Oh, yeah. Like, I, once I'm done with it, I I really want to look up some of that stuff to see, like, you know, what's the recommendations for doing this? Because you can probably skip a whole bunch of areas completely. Um, yeah. And I, I would really love to watch a speedrun. 
of this because I, I feel like someone's like, yeah, you, I, I went pretty slow and I beat it in 45 minutes, that sort of thing. <laughs> so, but still, Hollow Knight is, I, I'm, I'm staying on it because I feel like it's one of those games, like one of the Souls games, if you take a week or two off, you sort of, you sort of you forget how it. to ride that bike. Yep. Yeah. So I, I sort of want to get into it, do as much as I can, finish it, and if it dumps me back in the world, I'll probably explore some of the DLC stuff, but I, I kind of have other Switch games to move on to, like Yoku's Island Express and Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, like and the next game I'm talking about, like there's there's so much other stuff for me to play that I'd sort of rather to pick it up again on PS4. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least this week, uh, Nintendo... They finally figured out how to sell indie games on the Switch. Uh, they finally are saying, this game is coming to Switch, and it's out right now. And I go, where's my Switch? I gotta go buy this thing, like today, like this week, Into the Breach came out on Switch. Yep, I saw. And I thought, well, I never got into it on PC because I I don't have a great... My PC is up here in the office slash podcast recording studio slash E1M1 Studios uh, headquarters. Um, it's not really great. I, I want to spend time with my family instead yep. of being, you know, uh, quarantined off up here. And every time I bring out my laptop, my kid wants to smush her face into the keyboard for some reason. She's two. Because she's so, a child. Yeah, That's like, Come on. She, she's two. It probably feels fun. And oh yeah, Dad she, says I, no, don't do it. So she's got to do it. When I was a kid, I was all about smashing on keyboards, <laughs> yeah. even if they weren't plugged in or turned on or attached to anything. I was just all about the clackety clackety key noise. I, I've got to I've got to find a fake keyboard around here somewhere. Maybe that keyboard that just broke. I'll just give that to her. That's there you go. Yeah, like the like the cat keyboard. I used to have a cat keyboard. Yeah, as well. like a decoy keyboard. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I figured, well, the switch is sort of a perfect place to play this because it it's a really great pick up and put down sort of thing because each level is so short that yep. even if I only play a level or two that's great I'm still making some progress and man it's really good on Switch <laughs> like, is it? I, I think so the thing that surprised me is there's no touch screen support but, that I but, was not expecting to hear I was really surprised about that but I think why is because they got the they got the um, controller support down perfectly. I, I the thing that I didn't realize about games, and I feel like Dead Cells did this really well too, is after a, just a little bit of the of time with the game, you kind of forget the buttons. Yeah, and you're just sort of playing the game. You know, Dead Cells is like, oh, well, yeah, my my left-hand weapon is on L2, and my right-hand, you know, my left-hand tool and my right-hand tool are on L2 and R2. Yeah, that just makes sense. Like, I know how to play the game now. For Into the Breach, it was maybe two or three maps, and I sort of forgot that I was using a controller for it. That's the best. And it just like once I figured it out a couple hours later, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just I'm just playing into the breach with a controller. This is, and they do smart stuff like the there's a very small amount of snap t- for your cursor on the grid. It's so, like if you're mm-hmm. not exactly on the grid, it just sort of like moves your cursor over just like a couple of pixels so you're in the right spot, and it it all feels really perfect. And I that was the thing I was really worried about having played it on keyboard and mouse was playing that game with a mouse feels really good. You're just, yeah, it controls well with the mouse because it's a grid based game. I really, really like it on a controller. And they're actually saying that sometime this month, they're patching in controller support on the steam version good. or PC versions. And it feels sort of silly because I want to talk a lot about, into the breach but it's kind of a known quantity at this point like subset games makes really great games yep. into the breach is really good and you kind of know that because people have been playing it for like a year already oh yeah um, so for me it runs really well on switch it has all the this the stuff from the base game it controls really well on 
uh, on with controllers controls and I don't feel punished by the game by playing it on easy. Um, yeah, and that that feels really great because I I played a couple of games on normal and a lot like FTL. You, you court, I was sort of not making it far enough to learn any lessons. Yeah, like I wasn't making it to the end of the first island. I was like, well, this is. It's frustrating because I'm not even learning how to play the game. I'm just scraping by, but putting it on easy, it's like, oh, okay, now I, all right, I have to, I have to defend the buildings instead of my units. My units can take a little bit of damage, but the buildings can't really. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm yeah. picking up all this. What I'm sure people are listening to is like, yeah, of course, Boston. Like, of course you protect the buildings. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but I never really, I never really played into the breach yeah. until now, and. I'm happy that they, I'm happy that they're finding success on Switch. It sounds like it's doing gangbusters. Yeah, and I'm really happy it controls well on, on a, a controller because that is it's like when we first started playing Diablo three and it's like, ah oh, crap, this works. Okay, cool. Like, yeah, th- those those geniuses they figured out a way to do it, um, and they did. And kudos to them. So. Um, this gives me hope that it'll maybe eventually come out on PS4 and Xbox One at some point. Hopefully. Hopefully it does, It does, and then hopefully... It, I mean, Switch, I think, to be honest, let's face it, Switch is the perfect place for that thing, because yeah. then you can play it on the go, short spaces, really good, whatever. Indies are selling um, like crazy on Switch right now, too. Yeah, especially if they're promoted well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, no, I mean, if it comes to the other consoles, good for them, but I'm just... I mean, it made a big splash when it came out, and then everybody stopped talking about it. It's making another big splash again. Yep. So we'll see how it does if it comes out to the other consoles as well. But if it's doing well for them, good for them. They, they yep. deserve it. Cause it's like two people make that game, so like... Yeah, and I'm um, pretty sure it's a, it was a Kickstarter um, project. FTL was, wasn't it? FTL was. I don't remember if Into the Breach was. I don't I think Into like the Breach was. I feel like that one wasn't. Yeah. But it's another studio that's started from the back of a successful kickstarter so. yep yeah and they've Good managed to put out not only the kickstarter game but now a second one and both of them are incredibly good so mm-hmm. one of the few success stories uh but that's all i've been playing this week so let's take a break Let's talk releases for the week of September 3rd, 2018. Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age comes out on PS4 and PC. Uh, I have been... I've had this pre-order for a while because it's a new JRPG. Um, Wait, what? You pre-ordered a JRPG? I know, it's crazy. Um, I have been shocked at how glowing every review for this game has been. I'm not going to lie, like, I jumped into our Discord and I was seeing, I think it was you, Soulman, and a couple of other people talking about it. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, they're, they're excited about it. That much I understand. Let's see what the other people have to say about it. <laughs> yeah. And so far it's just been, like, fireworks and... Po- and yeah, pops JRPG going of the everywhere. year. Yeah. And I, I think the thing is, the the only reviews I've seen where people haven't really liked it is... And God, I hate to say this, and it's going to sound elitist, and I'm sorry. But it's people pe- who don't get it. No, it's people that don't get Dragon Quest because Dragon Quest is this game that you don't sit down and play for ten hours at a time. You maybe play for like half an hour a night, most nights yeah. of the week, and it's it's more like it's more like watching an episode of a show you're binging, like one every night, and it just. It's it's the most comfort food RPG because fr- between Dragon Quest one and eleven, a discounting nine and ten, they're all the same. And yeah, normally that's a negative, and people are gonna probably be like, yeah, they're they're exactly the same. And it just feels like getting into a warm bath where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, 
That's the stuff. And you're going to play it for probably 80 hours. And it's going to... It's just going to be good fun. Good blue sky fun the whole time. Yeah. And I really feel like that right now. I, I could do with that. It's kind of needed at the moment. Yeah, and it's it's such a break from the... <laughs> Louise. Um, she, she saw my audio tracking. Oh, meter. she's like, ooh, hello. <laughs> it, I feel like I'm playing about 15 Metroidvanias right now, so <laughs> yeah. literally anything else would feel really great. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm really... I'd like, I don't know what to play at any given moment. One of yeah. the reasons why I'm achievement hunting is because I can't decide what I actually want to play. So I've been really tempted to jump down a crazy game and pick up one of the Yakuza games. Yeah, Yakuza Zero is so good. Yeah, but it's scary. It's I feel like Yakuza Zero isn't that bad because it does a really good job of if you pick it up after a little bit of time, you just need to hit the start button and go to the menu, and at the bottom it'd be like. That's right. I'm supposed to go do this in this place. It's like, oh, right, right, right. Like it, it always is. Or if you just stand still for about ten, fifteen seconds, he'll just be like, I really should go over this other place and go back to my office. And it's like, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Video games. Me too. Uh, coming up next is Hyperlight Drifter for the Switch. Good um, place for it. I hope more people buy it. Yeah, and this is they're calling it a special edition i guess they have an exclusive mode in it too i think it's like some tower crawl mode sounds more like a wave based enemy thing um and they're putting in some additional guns and armor pieces um so if you haven't played hyperlight drifter go play it we did a uh, game club on it the game is really good yes it genuinely is yeah and as long as it runs smoothly on switch just go pick it up Yep. It's great. And last but certainly not least, finally coming out, Marvel's Spider-Man on the PS4. Um, yep. Game oh, of the Year boy. fodder alongside God of War. Well, I believe, I, I don't know why suddenly America is switching to the European release. I believe it comes out on Friday, doesn't it? Comes out on the 7th? Oh, I thought it was coming out on... Um, let's look. Spider-Man. Uh, it is coming out on... It is the 7th. Boy, that's weird. I, so, huh. thank you, America, for getting with the logical release time on right. Fridays. Play it on the weekend. Yes, exactly. That way you don't have to call out of work during the week. So, based on my installation time and download speed on the PlayStation, I'll be talking about this not next week, the week after. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, uh, people that own PS4s, your PS4 download speeds go faster if you don't have any apps open on your PS4. Any yep. games or anything. Just close all of them. Or if you have Plus, just let it download when you're asleep. Yep. I just closed news... Uh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> let's move on to news stories. Uh, let's just uh, let's just talk about the stupidity at the beginning. I, I almost want to just dump this and just <laughs> not comment, but... Sony has made another comment about crossplay. I agree. It's it's a tempting thing to dump it. <laughs> yeah. We cannot dump it because things need to be said about this. Yeah. So they're specifically talking about crossplay for Fortnite again because um someone asked them again, like, yo man, when's Fortnite crossplay gonna happen? Because everyone wants it. Yeah. And they say what they essentially boiled it down to is the PS4 won't get Fortnite crossplay because PlayStation is the best place to play Fortnite. No, it's not. The PC is. I mean, anything at this point is other than PS4 because it's not a walled garden. Yeah. Like, well, if they if they want to get 100% technical and take all the multiplayer stuff out of the equation. As always, the best place to play any video game ever yep. is on a powerful PC. Yep. Or with Fortnite, even a halfway powerful PC. Like, it doesn't... The great thing about that engine is it doesn't super push... Uh, it's not like PUBG had some issues with early on, where it's like, <laughs> you gotta have a real beefy machine, and then it sort of still runs badly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, which is part of the reason behind the numerous lawsuits between Bluehole and Epic Games. Um... 
This sucks. Like, I, I keep wanting to bring this up on the show because I feel like too often with video games, something happens one week, and then something dumb happens the next week, and we forgot we get forget about everything else that happened before it. Mm-hmm. Sony, the, this still sucks. Yeah, it's the current news cycle in America where yes. you forget about something that happened a week ago. Hey guys, does Flint, Michigan have water yet? <laughs> yeah, but it's real bad. Mm-hmm. People forget about that because every week there's some new drama. There's some new nightmare up, happening. Yeah. And everybody forgets about that kind of stuff. But this I, the only way I can describe this is this is Sony off the PlayStation 2 into the PlayStation 3. Yep. They are giving that attitude again. The same high horse attitude. Mm-hmm. It's Everyone talks these days about how consumer rights are dying and so on and so forth. And a lot of companies are making really good strides into more consumer-friendly decisions. Mm -hmm. Stuff like um, Xbox's um, the the cross-play stuff, the uh, Play Anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I also always talked about Game Share earlier today. And I'm like, I forgot about Game Share and I forgot about Play Anywhere. Like, it's all these these things where it's like, of course you can play it on Windows Time Machine, whatever. Yeah, stuff like that is a very good consumer thing. Don't get me wrong, eventually digital libraries and services will shut down and we'll be locked out of those games. Yeah. That's choices we make. By that That's time, why I bought I Game be, Pass. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is the most anti-consumer thing I have heard in a long time. Yeah. Maybe with the exception of Amazon being like, yo, we don't pay you enough and you can't even afford to buy right. groceries it it's so blatantly anti-consumer mm-hmm. that it's just like to me it's either it's either blatantly anti-consumer or blind ignorance like it can only be one of the yeah. two because either they're hearing all of us wailing about please let us play Fortnite and, and everything else by the way with our friends crossplay, and they're just saying no which to be fair, is their prerogative because it's their platform, even though it yep. sucks. Or they're not paying attention to it at all, and there's something failing in the, the messaging chain internally in Sony, and they're not hearing the wailing, which is equally as bad, if not worse. <laughs> yeah. I, to be honest, the, the thing I see from this is it's the... It's the... the, the, the I don't think they're looking at the 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 messages from users. I don't right. think they're hearing what we're saying. Too many people are looking at a bar chart saying, these are our sales, these are our numbers. Right. We don't have to do anything. Right. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, it's maybe there's a social media summary at PS4 where it's like, hey, this week, you know, our, our PlayStation gamers would still really like crossplay with Fortnite. It's not like you know, the second big one is second message is like, we're really excited for Spider Man. That's like a thousand messages and crossplay is like two million. <laughs> like they're never mm-hmm. they're never seeing the quantity. They're just like, yeah, another week. Those nerds yeah, just, are still asking for crossplay. Whatever. Yeah, what they'll see is even if they do see numbers, it will be two hundred thousand people are complaining about crossplay on Fortnite. Yeah. Two like a hundred thousand people are really hyped about Spider Man. Our sales number or our unit sold number is still a hundred million higher than everybody else. Right. None of the rest of the stuff matters. That's the that's the important number. And then just me over on Twitter being like, "Hey, everyone, don't forget that Destiny Two exclusives on PlayStation still suck. See you later." Yep. <laughs> Which, by the way, console exclusives still suck, no matter yes, where you do. are. I and I think the the only thing, the thing that's disappointing to me is. I think at the beginning of the PS4's life cycle, it felt like both Sony and Microsoft were looking long term. They were looking mm-hmm. at another, at least potentially five year long console cycle. And you know, Microsoft made the changes really early about some of the console DRM that people pushed back very hard on. And with stuff like Game Pass and this all access pass, is what I think they're calling the subsidized plan now. They're very clearly setting a lot of groundwork for the console to do very well over an extended period of time. And then at some point, Sony just stopped. (laughs) Because 
all it seems to me that they're doing is they're pushing people over onto Switch, or especially specifically for Fortnite, over on Xbox or Switch or PC, or you can have multiple people sitting and playing the same game together across those platforms. Just not PS4. Yeah. The the only thing they have right now is they have the exclusive games. That's yep. literally the only positive about about PlayStation at the moment is the exclusive games that they have, which God of War is going to be game of the year this year, I think, for the majority of retailers. Unless, sure. unless Spider-Man comes out swinging. No pun intended. <laughs> but unless it comes out swinging and really, literally... <laughs> Nails, nails a massive dinger. Right, then right. it's going to be God of War is going to be this year's game. Well, of the year. and Spider Man has. Oh yeah, we were just talking about the news cycle. Spider Man does have the uh, dubious honor of releasing closer to the end of the year, so that might be a good thing if it's really great. Where it's like, oh yeah, God of War did come. I forgot about that. Um, the Resident Evil Seven problem. Exactly. Where it's like January. Pff, those games are a year old now. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, Sony, this still sucks. Stop yep. sucking. Like I, I just, I love the console. Um, but you're you're, you're being bad again. Yeah, stop being there's, bad. There is very few times on this show I wish I was allowed to swear. This right. is one of them. Yep. Yeah. Well, get ready because our next news story is the announcement of the final, probably last sort of actually very final Binding of Isaac piece of DLC. Maybe. It's called Repentance, which is a really great name for a guy that keeps not quitting Binding of Isaac. Yep. Um, I, I, I wish we were still doing uh, the Binding T-ball. of Empire because we could get super inside baseball with this, but for anyone that doesn't know Binding of Isaac, I think it was last year uh, there was they used to call them total conversion mods. Basically, a, a small team of people made a mod for the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, not the Plus version, um, called the Binding of Isaac Anti-Birth. And basically, they made an entire new Binding of Isaac. Uh, yep. All new floors, all new bosses, uh, items, like pathways. You had to do specific stuff to build items to get to different floors. It was very detailed, and and they did a really great job. Pretty soon after it came out, Afterbirth Plus came out and sort of changed the engine and how you mod stuff in Isaac. And uh, the developers and, and Ed, the designer, and the modders couldn't really come together to make it work in Afterbirth Plus without the modders having to rewrite the entire thing. So, for about the last year, it's been the, the head guy in the modding and then Ed, the designer, sort of saying, like, I'd really love to do it, but it's, it's just going to take a lot of work. Until they show up at PAX West, and <laughs> Repentance is basically just anti-birth in Afterbirth Plus. So, yep. <laughs> they've been trolling us all along, which sounds about right. Um, but what's really great is um, they hired the guy who wrote the anti-birth mod. Uh, the programmer behind it and stuck him in Binding of Isaac team. and said, fix the game and put Anna Birth in it. Uh, yep. And he did. And it will be coming out sometime next year, it sounds like, and it will be paid DLC because apparently it's it's really big. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, he basically made a new game, so that's fine. Yeah, I will give him my money in 2022 when it eventually comes out on my platform of choice. Uh, someone asked, Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, someone asked um, uh, Ed. The, so the reason why I keep saying Ed the designer is because Ed designed the game and Nicholas, the developer slash publisher, did everything else. The programming, the art, uh, the music, the publishing. Uh, that's where the problems really lie. Ed is just saying, you know, here's the designing. He's helping, you know, design the actual game, and then Nicholas implements it. Um, Ed has nothing to do with porting this stuff to consoles. Uh, mm-hmm. He seems as frustrated as we are, but it's yes, he does. that's the company that's publishing his stuff, so he sort of can't talk too much mess about it. He's been told it's about two months until all that stuff comes to consoles. 
I so it's about two plus twenty four, so about two years. Yeah. So I sort of don't believe it. Not because I don't believe Ed. I don't believe Nicholas. I don't believe Nicholas. Exactly. So yeah. So unless that, unless that, like that, that guy that you've got, who's the the wizard bug fixer guy, is is really that good? Then I see two years, not mm-hmm. two months. And someone, someone on the Binding of Isaac subreddit brought up a really great point that um, it's really a shame that Isaac wasn't written in something like Unity because look at something like Dead Cells that was written in Unity and something like Hollow Knight that I'm fairly sure is written in Unity. The Unity's porting tools have made it so much easier to bring your game, you know, certification and and platform stuff aside, has made it so much easier to be able to bring your game to multiple platforms, especially at the same time. Yeah. That it's really a shame that Isaac wasn't written in that, either because it came out a little bit before Unity really picked up big or they just didn't want to. Um, You know, they were were bitten pretty hard by Flash. The original Isaac was written in Flash. Um, Yeah to tell you exactly how old Binding of Isaac is. Um, and it's, it, it's times like this that it's really a bummer that it wasn't written in a platform, in an engine like that. Um, yeah. That would, make, that would make porting at least easier than whatever nightmare they have to go through now. Um, so, bummer. Uh, but last news story here. A surprising announcement of Streets of Rage 4. <laughs> yeah, I deliberately have not looked at that trailer. Because it, it's actually, I think it might be one of the questions for this week, is with that announcement, what other games from that era would you mm, like to yeah. see upported? Literally, number one on top of my list from that era, the only thing I can think of that doesn't have a modern-day equivalent is Streets of Rage. Yeah. Like, that's number one. Like, that game was my jam. Like, that was, I will play through this game 15 times over and over and over and over and over again because I love the game so much. Yeah, and I think the thing that, makes me really happy is lizard cube is the developers um they made wonder boy the dragon's trap um i haven't played it yet so it's a very faithful recreation and they looking at the stuff from streets rage 4 i know you didn't watch the trailer what it looks like is just a really pretty streets of rage game like it it seems like it keeps that exact same spirit and probably a lot of the how the game controls and how the game plays they just kind of made it look like a modern game yeah i am very interested in the fact that the the og um composer was asked if he was doing music on this and he was like i would love to do some streets of rage music uh i cannot comment on that at this time oh yeah Uh, there'll be more thing going forwards which basically says to me yo he's doing the music (laughs) for this i'm working on it right now (laughs) yeah Yeah. uh let's move over to questions dimebag uh, three and five in chat says do you ever think they'll make a binding of isaac 2 yes i i know i don't think ed can ever quit isaac and i think at some point He'll just want to make a new thing, probably in a couple of years' time. Yeah, I mean, I I could see him doing it, but I could also see him basically just keep going on the Isaac. <laughs> like, probably. I wonder if, is, at what point the engine sort of crumbles under Isaac as a game. Because it's, I, it's I, tough I, on that engine. I could see him doing a Binding of Isaac instead of biblical name here, which is essentially right. everything to do with Binding of Isaac, just done in a different engine. I've got one. Binding of Isaac Genesis. There you go. It's a brand... It's Everything Binding it's, of Isaac you love, reborn into a new engine. In, into Unity, into Frostbite, into whatever. Yeah, Frostbite, everything. God, that would be so great. <laughs> it would be so great if Frostbite would be used for Binding of Isaac. Oh yeah, the most uh, hyper-realistic engine out oh there, my in my opinion, being used for Isaac would be it, fantastic. I would it love would if they gross. would just make it look exactly the same. Just like, mm-hmm. not use the graphical p- prowess of Frostbite at all. Just be like, hey, it's Bonnie of Isaac brought to you by Frostbite. It, it yeah. looks exactly the same. 
Yeah. <laughs> so ha- have them. Oh man. Have him do that. So yeah, Genesis is a really good name for it. Revelations would be a really good name there for it go. as well. Yeah. Of the whole thing ported to a different engine, yep. given the HD treatment and all that kind of stuff. I mean, not like not HD now, but <laughs> I'd love if they would say now in HD and it just it yes. still looks like a 16-bit game. <laughs> yeah, 100. percent Oh, God, that would be so funny. This is why I don't make Rem- games. Remastered would be just anything to do with it. Like, the re- <laughs> dude, like marketing it as the remastered version, yeah. and it looks exactly the same. Oh, that would be so good. Oh, man. Uh, T-Bomb Rocks in Discord says, Do you think the reason why Microsoft has not announced an Elite 2 is because they will be adding it to the design lab? God, if only... Oh. That would be a very smart decision for them to make. Would be basically to have the design lab in there and just click the elite button and yep. have it switch out parts for elite parts. That would be genius. You can make a control that just looks so good. Mm-hmm. You mean like a nice dark green elite controller with like the dark green rubber grips and yeah. pale yellow buttons? I'll, I'll be down for that. Yeah. I When I was uh, looking to buy a new Xbox One controller. I hit up the design lab and I made a controller I really liked. And then you realized it was $90? It's like $78. I was like, mm-hmm. well, never mind. Amazon has one on sale right now. The black one for $35. So I'll be, I'll be picking that one up. Oh, I got my... Um, I, I have loaded um, design labs up and built custom controllers for me and my wife five times oh, no. and never clicked the buy button. It's so much. Like it's, mm-hmm. I really like Design Lab because you can get the exact controller that you like. Mm-hmm. You're just going to be paying for it, which is fair. Yep. Yeah. I got my uh, PS4 translucent uh, 500 million anniversary yeah, controller. Saw. Man, that thing looks good. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so, and also for both controllers, it's really nice to have a new controller. It's like oh yeah, boy, my Xbox like to feel my Xbox con- controller was busted. I never realized yeah. how bad my shoulder buttons were until I until you <laughs> until I used a new one. I was like, oh, that thing was broken. Yeah, uh, I in working on FIFA achievements, I've been using. A uh, second controller, trying to get some of them. Mm, oh yeah, and the second controller I've got is the Scorpio uh, controller oh, right. for the X, and it's literally brand new. I've used it like six times, so it was like this feels so good. Right. <laughs> Shame it's not my elite. But right, it feels so good. <clears throat> well, and, like there's there's so many improvements to the Xbox One controller because I had the launch controller I was still using. Um, mm. like even the little rubberized bottom part feels good where it's like yep. it's not full rubber it's just like a little bit grippy and it's like ooh this is yeah that feels yeah that's nice it's a, it's a shame you didn't have $150 to spend on an elite controller because those things are life changes yeah and I feel like I feel like to me I don't play the Xbox One enough to justify the investment true but it's also a PC controller that's fair but I also don't play my PC <laughs> <laughs> and you can also spend fifty dollars and get a dongle and use it on your PlayStation. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's just I, I, we've talked about it a lot on the show. Our our controller preferences are exactly the opposite in yep. nearly every facet. So it's like it's so funny to me saying like, yeah, I could play, I could use the Xbox One controller on a PS4, or I could use my PS4 controller on my Xbox One. <laughs> <You're> yep. Like, <laughs> And it's not even to me. It's not even like I I how much I like one console over the other. It's just that controller feels so great in my hands. To the same way that I know the Elite controller, like you put your hands on it, and you're like, yeah, I'm home. This, yep. this feels perfect. It also helps that that thing is heavy. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's the only thing that's sort of a bummer about some controllers. Like the new Xbox One feels good, and then the PS4 one feels good, but. Sometimes, like, even a little bit more weight wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Stick some lead balls in that thing. Yeah. Get it get a little heavier. Yeah. Uh, T-Bomb Rocks also asked, with Streets of Rage 4 being released, new hand-drawn style for the new console got me thinking, what are some franchises from a 16-slash-32-bit era you would want a similar direct sequel? Uh, Dan Bag and Chat with a great suggestion of Golden Axe. That's a really... I'd... I'd be curious to see what someone could make 
ignoring the 360 Golden Axe game. Um, what, you mean the Resident Evil Golden Axe game? <laughs> yeah, that thing was... Ignoring that, like, what would a new Golden Axe look like? I, I wonder if it would almost look like Castle Crashers. Not, yeah. not poop-soaked, not- but like... <laughs> <laughs> I remember the pooping deer. It's yep. the only thing I remember from that game. Dude, that game is filthy on so many levels. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, to be honest, it would like Scott Pilgrim is a prime example of how you do a side scroll and action game yep. in modern day. That's basically a sequel of um, River City Ransom. They they yep. literally copied that game, but. Mm-hmm. In a really great way. I I mean, my answer for the longest time would have been Toji and Earl, but man, we're yeah, getting that. totally getting that game in, what is it, September? Two months. So so you're getting that. I'm getting Streets of Rage, which is always my jam. But yep. I go back to that those times and I say, well, okay, what other games did I play at that time? Um, Super Hang On. Mm, yeah. But we get, like, how many MotoGP games a year these days? Yeah. And then there was Super Monaco F1, or Super Monaco GP, which is essentially a Formula One game, right. which we get a Formula One game every year now, so that's that taken care of as well. Hmm. Sonic, like Sonic Mania just came out, and that's a, another 16-bit Sonic game. You know, like... Uh, oh, hmm. Alex Kidd. Give me a good remake of Alex Kidd. Yeah, well, they just had one, right? Yeah, but did it have the rock paper scissors completely BS boss battles at the end of every single level? Boy, I don't remember. I don't. I don't. Re- I think they. Yeah, I always get Alex Kidd and Monster World mixed up. So I don't. Alex Kidd is the one with the fist the size of his brain. Yeah, Jimbo Jangle says the strike games like Urban Strike, Jungle Strike, Desert yeah, Strike. Yeah, that'd that's... be great. Yeah, it's a good call. I Dime mean, Bay. Ace Combat 5 kind of had some of that with the helicopter missions oh, in there. Oh, yeah. Dimebag 315 uh, <laughs> uh, lays out one of my most frustrating experiences with uh, Genesis game, Kid Chameleon. The seemingly never-ending game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I would have said Theme Hospital, but... Yeah, Two Point Hospital just came out. I also didn't realize how, how expensive it is. It's $40. <laughs> Oh, I was gonna pick it up, and I was like, "All right, let's pull up the Steam forty dollars." Okay. Is it? Mm, I was about to ask if it's on Origin, then, but no, it probably wouldn't be considering their relationship with the. Yeah, people. I think it's self-published. Oh, yeah. I, I, but dude, I want to support them though. This is a vampire situation again. Is do I drop forty dollars on this game? That I don't know. I know, but then like I don't even have a great place to play it. You know. I, I hate to, I hate to say this because I hate when people do it, but like put it on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag how long to Switch? Uh, yeah, I hate when people do port begging for Switch, but I get. I mean, I get it. But Hashtag how long to Xbox, punks? Come sure. On. There you go, Nicholas. When the sun dies. <laughs> yes. As the, the Earth heat. is disintegrating, they push the publish button on Steam. Yeah, we the finally heat did it. The <laughs> universe approaches. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, uh, we're out of time, so uh, there's there's a couple more questions here in the show notes. We'll save those until next week. Um, but I, I have, as we talked about, I have a doctor's appointment to go to for not me, but my my, my cat. Um, uh, if you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Everywhere you can find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, don't forget to join the Discord server. It's, it's hopping like crazy, um, especially with people getting back into Destiny 2 and begging me to come on Xbox One. Um, yep. I'd love to. Phrasing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, that just totally derailed my train of thought. <laughs> yep. Uh, Game Club this month. Ori in the Blind Forest. If you're a patron, patron.com slash E1M on the ones or numbers, you can go vote on what game we'll be playing next. There are three choices. I won't spoil which one they are. Uh, there was a good question uh, posed in uh, Discord. Uh, that someone didn't know what the three games are, check out some trailers. You might find a new game you're interested in playing and and yep. uh, find a new one to vote for. Um, and uh, YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, all those places, find us and follow us there, and we will. it will let you know when we go live. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Tell a friend.
Hashtag tell friend. Yep. All right, hit me with those titles. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Replace the plank with me. <laughs> Working as intended. Someone made of marshmallow. Duck emoji button. I'm in both phases. Hollow Knight's Blight Town. <laughs> Thank you, America. And not poop soaked. I have. I made the wrong decision twice. Uh, the achievement hunter I want to be made out of marshmallow and then replace the plank with me. Oh. I don't know. Nothing's really jumping out me. I kind of like the achievement hunter I want to be. Yeah, it's a little much sums long. Up adult life. Yeah, made out of marshmallow is pretty good. Mm-hmm. I feel like we didn't have a ton of titles this week for some reason. Sometimes we just have a week where we're not being witty. It's a little more serious. Yeah. If give uh, Luis a little bit of water there. Yeah, let's see if she actually drinks it. So no, you backwashed it. Mm-hmm. Um, she just goes because it makes noises. Oh yeah, I, we've got a big water tank, and whenever it blubs, she runs away from it. <laughs> I could vote for made out of marshmallow. Marshmallow mm-hmm. is just a fun word. Oh yeah, marshmallows. Are, it's a fun word. It's a fun food. It's great in every in everything. I'll circle it. It's great to put on cookies. It's great to put in hot chocolate. Yeah. Is marshmallow ever bad, other than when it's a man? Uh, it catches on fire easily. Well, that's not the marshmallow's fault. That is the <laughs> person who's making its fault for not paying attention to said marshmallow. That's fair. Same I'm not even talking about, about forests, like, dude. Yeah, I'm not even talking about like in a s'mores context. It just for some reason I remember it being very likely to catch on fire. I don't remember what that is. I like Dimebag's uh, title by Telefriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really good as well. All right, let's get started here in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 567 for September 3rd, 2018, made out of marshmallow. Wibbly wobbly. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I gotta go. Bye. And we can stop recording.